Hey, hello everybody, welcome to the Santa Stream. Today we're going to take a look at Groove Riser by Jim Audio. So, uh, Jim uh, Pavlov, the developer, uh, same guy who bought us the 202 Poison Mixer. Uh, mixer. <laughs> uh, 202 Poison. I, I, I normally start again, but it's Christmas. Uh, the 202 Poison Synth. Um, this is, if you're familiar with uh, like uh, the Electribe and stuff like that, uh, the hardware thing, you know, uh, the version, uh, you're going to know pretty much how this works. It's it's awesome. Um, you can do, it's 16 parts. So you have 16 parts, you can build up your grooves. You can build up your grooves over four bars in length. Uh, I'm just going to give you an idea of how this thing sounds. <laughs> Okay, so while this is playing in the background there, uh, you can see that this one's obviously been programmed for two bars. Goes to two, and then back again. Okay, so if we stop this, we can enter our enter here for our part 15 setting. And we can, if you notice here, all the parts will change. So these are the 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 the, 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 the sounds that have been assigned to these different pads. So that's trigger mode. Okay, in sequence mode, let's choose a sound. Uh, in sequence mode, you can see where the actual uh, drums have been triggered. So this is part nine, which is a kick, and it's been triggered on the first beat, obviously there, uh, the 11, 12, and 14th of 16 steps. Let's go to part 10. Okay, so that's how you go to your sequence and then you can select your part here at any time you like. And you're, you can always know that there'll be a red light over the part number that you're actually in the process of messing around with, basically. So we're messing around with the kick drum. But if we want to trigger, say, the synth, we could go to sequence now and we could see that the synth is triggered on 9, 10 and um, 13 and 14. Say we want to play it. For programming wise, we want to we want to up the pitch a bit there. Say for instance, we want to change the sound. We hit wave here, and here's access to all your sounds. So at the moment, this is an oscillator. Now you can see there are tons and tons of oscillators and you do have control over those oscillators. You have modulators, you have effects, you have your envelope. Um, so there, these are all your oscillator sounds. So what was it? Let's choose this one, say. Let's turn the effect off. Not that one, that's motion. So now that would be assigned. And that's been assigned to that oscillator section there in the mixer. But I want to record, say, some... Well, I can, I'll, I'll enter it step sequence style, or I can just uh, hit this. Now I've 
have recorded that new sound onto that pattern. Um, now they're, they're your oscillators, so that's your synth basically. Your synth here, you can see you have different different things, and you have a lot of them as well to play with. See, lots and lots and lots. So you have the basic stuff there, and then you you go up and up and up. Then you have your kick drums to select. Now you can import your own samples as well, but I haven't actually got that deep into this yet. I mean, I've already started playing with it a couple of days ago when I got the beta. Actually, this is still a beta, but I got it a couple of days ago and it's only just been released as we as making this video now. And I'd only played with it for maybe an hour or so. And so now basically I'm I'm doing this at the same time as I'm actually learning about it. So I've changed that now sound that that lead sound to a kick. So these are all your kick drums here. And then you have all your different snares. You can see where this is going, right? Your different claps, your hi-hats, percussion, cymbals, toms, stabs. So Now I know this looks involved and it is, but that's good because this is the kind of app that you really, really want to dig into. Okay, so now I'm not sure about export options and stuff like that. Um it's basically a standalone thing, I think. Um although I'm I'm imagining, I guess, and let's just have a quick look. Uh, in it's uh, audio bus inputs here. Oh Groove Rider is definitely there because it's just appeared. So Groove Rider is definitely, definitely, definitely 100% inside the old uh, audio bus there. Audio bus 3, this is. I'm thinking it's probably not um, into uh, an audio unit, but it wouldn't need to be. And I'm guessing it probably is uh, into app audio. So we can easily check that as well by opening an AUM. So have a quick look at this and we can probably find it. If we go to into app audio, uh, there it is there. So it is into app audio and audio bus compatible, just not AUV3. But really, you wouldn't really need this to be AUV3. <laughs> See, it's very, very cool. And we have come on, come on, come on, no, come on, come on, no, you come on, come on, no, I, yeah, I don't want it, come on, no, you come on, come on, God, no, you come, come on, come on, come on, no, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Do it. Do it. No, you do it. Do it. No, no, you do, do it. it. I will. Get it. Get it. Did you get it? I don't. Get it. Get it. Give it up. Give it up. Hit it. I will. Jam. 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 And then we have some. Uh... Let's drop the pitch down a little bit there. Don't forget I was pitched up on my oscillators. So then you can assign your filter type. Okay, but maybe this one. And then we can assign our, our modulator type here. So you can see you have tons and tons and tons of options. So this is why. Mm -hmm. 
Then you have all sorts of other edit options as well, which I haven't already. I mean, you can see where it's been. This is where it's been programmed in. So this is step editing now, you know, so you're mm. changing the way things work and the way things are entered into the actual Groove Rider as well. So this thing is super, super, super deep. Now, I've messed around with this. Here are your included patterns to play with. OK, this is one I set up about two minutes ago before I started the video. Going over two bars. And you can edit either or, right? So you got, I can edit bar one, I can edit bar two. I can change, like so enter the menu now. I can change the pattern here. Oh no, wait a sec, what am I doing? Let me change it to four bars here. It looks like, hang on a minute, I know. I, let me exit, I'm, I've gone off my initial. See? Sorry, I hit the I hit a, new, a, a, a new patch. So two bar length. We want to change that. It's dead simple. We just tap on that there, and we can change it to four bars, and then it will copy the other patterns over anyway to 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 the two new bars. And it'll go. So that was a mixture of ed entering steps manually and recording steps at the same time. Okay, so um, let's see what else, what else? You can kind of see how this works. I want to show you the, um, if we exit that as well and go back to a proper proper one that Jim has set up. Start this. So we can hear, if we want to hear what uh, has been used, all we need to do is go to trigger. And it all together, we go to our mixer. And you can see some have already been muted out. We can put them back in. Now, here's another thing our MFX, I think it's like our motion our motion effects here these are mfx and this is for this and you might notice here as well that things will change and automate you can automate everything okay so if we watch if we pay attention to, to our effects section now you'll see that there is nothing switched on if we switch our you can't hear nothing but if we enter our value there let's see it's high EQ, so if we enter the modulator. Decimator. And you can have a different effect for every single one, see? So if, I, if I'm looking at type now, you can see all the different insert effects that have been applied to those different sounds. We don't really need, let's put a punch on there. Make quite nice. Now, this, the motion effects. If we select um, the type here, you can see that we have all sorts of different, very cool motion effects. Now, if I change the touchpad to this, which is stereo delay, and we play the track. <laughs> Now, also, the very, very, very cool thing here is that you can see here that the MFX is switched on for that kick drum. Let's switch it off. 
but it's still switched on for the snare. But let's switch it off for the snare. And let's switch it off for that as well. And make sure it's on for all the instrument sounds, which is one to eight. So now when I use the touch controller, the actual drum pattern won't be affected whatsoever. Which means that I can start to apply some very, very wacky effects. Let's try tape delay, but only to the instruments, which is very, very cool. Or individual instruments, or all of them if you want to. That way your effects aren't getting completely overridden. Now, here we go. Another one. On the mixer section here, you will see there is a send effect. Okay, so send effects are, is global. It's one effect and it's global to them all. Okay, so to access your send effects, let's just get rid of this here. We can go back to, let's go back to our part here. And somewhere here, pattern... Uh, dun, dun, dun. Somewhere here, you can see it's send effect is 202, it's reverb there. Now, I can't remember now what to do to change the send effect. I think you just tap on it. Yeah, there you go. And um, we can change it to room. Okay. And. <laughs> to try and exaggerate the send but the send will be the same see as so we're going through our different part settings here our send effect will be um here if you watch here as i scroll through the parts send effects room so you can always see what effect is being used. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so if we go into enter again and we just uh, choose our send effects, we can. And of course, we can individually adjust the send effect for every single part. I mean, there's no way in this one video. So that would be flanging on all the sends. There you go, guys. Uh, really not worth going any further uh, with this right now because this will give you enough to get going because there is so much stuff. You can write your, save your new patterns and stuff, obviously, of course. You can clear, copy, undo, redo. Like I said, you can edit various things like the sequencing, the keys, the chord. You can do chords. So you don't, it's very, very cool how it works, you know. So 
if, like I said, it, hopefully this has given you a basic idea, a basic overview of, of, of getting started uh, with the different things. Okay, uh, yeah, if you liked it, there'll be links in the description for the for the app and stuff like that. Um, if you liked it, please subscribe to the channel. Give the channel a thumbs up. Uh, consider becoming a patron. Groove Rider GR16 by Jim Audio. Awesome. See you guys later. In fact, I'll see you guys after Christmas. Have a good one.